Thank you. I don't recall seeing anybody saying they're remote. Did you hear from anybody saying they're going to be remote? Yeah. Uh, not remote, no. Um, okay. But just check the email. Ashton's not going to be here. So you're uh, agreed to chair. Yeah. And Melissa is running late and is going to join the meeting, hopefully remote after, towards the end. Okay. And this is second. That's the you know, updates I have. So. Okay. Others were still expecting. Are we expecting that? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I haven't heard anyone not attend. So this I don't know. I'm gonna drop in this <laughs> replacing John Nico can't be okay. here tonight. Thank you. Were you waiting to the last minute? It was. <laughs> you know why. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Should we come out? Say we're recording's on, but we can start anytime. Okay. Five, six. Let's see. It is 701, so I'm sitting in uh, tonight as chair for sorry, vice chair sitting in for chair. Uh, let's call a meeting to order. Um, Planning Commission, September 10th, 2024. Uh, would someone offer to read the land acknowledgement? Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you. We'd like to acknowledge we are on the traditional land of a rich and diverse group of Native peoples who have called this area home for more than 10,000 years. We honor with gratitude the land itself and the descendants of these Native peoples who are still here today. Thank you. Uh, next, approval of the agenda. Uh, you all have a hard copy in front of you and received by email. Just a very, very slight little, really administrative changes you'll see in yellow on the sheet in front of you. Um, but these are technically changes from what was distributed to the public. Um, so under the approval of meeting minutes, really, this is a change in form. It's just to note that it's approval of meeting minutes from August 13th, which was a regular meeting. So just adding some uh, text to that. And on meeting dates, there's a specific item we want to discuss, which is the discussion on a potential joint meeting with the Planning Commission and City Council. Uh, anyone have any concerns, objections to those changes to the agenda? I get a motion to approve the revised agenda. So moved. Second. Thank you. Those changes are approved. All right. Well, that takes us to the approval of meeting minutes from August 13th. Um, any changes, edits, corrections that have caught your eye? So head not sh Sharid, no. Okay. Good. All right. Then could I get a motion to approve those minutes as written? So moved. All right. I'll second. All right. Second from Meredith. Okay, those are approved. Meeting dates. And I think I'm just gonna look to look to you, Mark, on this. So we're gonna discuss the a potential joint meeting of the commission and council. Um, we we have time at the end of the agenda to talk about issues and items coming before the planning commission over the next year. But we thought we'd move to the front of the agenda, a next step for the comprehensive plan. We discussed it at uh, City Council on the 26th of September. We're hoping to transmit it officially, um, but be prepared at that point for questions about what comes next and make that happen. December is moving. So, one of the items that was discussed mutually was the possibility of a joint workshop. Uh, meeting, whatever you want to call it, where the planning commission and city council can sit together early in the process and convey the effort onto questions, have a discussion. How did we arrive at this point? In addition to the cover letter that's in the, the packet, it was discussed broadly enough that we we think that's the desire, and we know that the planning commission has gone through a long series of special meetings. Um, but the city council really likes that partnership 
uh, sometime, uh, possibly in October. So the city council's requesting that this, that the commission, yeah, not like, formally as a body, but yeah, yeah, but just a, okay. Just, 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 and so we're hoping to put that together as we go through September. We wanted to virtue with you tonight, fully knowing that we have other items for your regular meetings, if you have busy yeah. lives, but it's important enough to at least make sure we're all on the same page. So would the most likely plan be a city council meeting and meeting jointly there or a special meeting for both bodies? Uh, as it stands right now, I'm thinking a special meeting, possibly on a Saturday, you know, mm -hmm. in addition to the, the existing workloads that council and the commission have. And the other only other alternative would be a city council work session where we meet in this room. Um, so, but I think that there might not be enough time and we do have other things on the agenda. So I think if uh, if a Saturday meeting is difficult, I think we could look at extending some of those work session meetings. Um, there's one, I don't, I have not, I do not have the, post, you know, we identify agendas out in time and I don't have it for October 10th is one of those working sessions. Um, and Mark, you may have already looked at the calendar, which I haven't done, to see uh, if there's space on any of the council work sessions. Um, there is, if if, uh, if all the items that are anticipated in October stay, and we extend the agenda, start right. early Correct. or start late. Correct, yeah, usually there, I mean, because when we have regular council meetings, we go as late as it takes, right? So. Yes, the other, um, the other committee of the whole meeting, which is a working session, is on the 21st of October. So those are, I just mentioned those as possibilities. If the evenings are better for people, then we can pick. Can we like, discuss real quickly? How would Saturday work for all of you? And we're talking about Saturday evening? Is that what we're talking about? Or any time I'm, on the Saturday. Yeah, I'm pitching it out there. My contact at city council is unavailable any day, any time. <laughs> when would you like to meet? <laughs> okay, so, so I'm hard pressed to decide. Yeah. So the question is to us. Yeah. 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 I, I think, think a couple of hours would be good. Two hours. Uh -huh. Allowing two hours. Sorry. Yeah. I'm happy to do a Saturday. It just depends on the Saturday. Yeah, so it depends on the Saturday. Saturday. Exactly. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm largely gone that much, but but I know maybe the pit. Uh, yeah, that's Are we thinking October or late September or either? Uh, it would have to be after September 26. Okay. But probably closer to that than, than November. Uh, so the 28th of September or as Lois said, uh, 20, or 20, the, 5th the 5th of October. Was both of no, not it's a 28th. 28th. 28th would be too soon for the council to read the document. <laughs> what, does it sound like a fit works for most people? The fifth is a holiday. Oh, it so, is. Uh, so, Shereen, were you going to say so. something? Yeah, I, I, I can do the 28th, September 28th, in the evening, Friday. right? Yeah. And I'm not suggesting logistically it doesn't make sense because the council will probably not have, I think it's the most productive if the council has had a chance to read mm. the Oh, the sure. plan and the recommendation. So later October is best. So uh, I think uh, even early October, just something that gives a little bit more time. So. So should we just look at the various Saturdays real quick and get a get that figured out, and then if we need to do what was that? The twenty first is a Monday, I think you said, but we could. Yeah, potentially do. Well, I think, but let's do the Saturdays first. So October fifth, do we have issues? Yes. Out. Okay, that's an, uh, two outs. Twelfth. Holiday week. Is it? Columbus Day. We're Indigenous Peoples Day. Oh, is that Monday? It's not up. And also Yom Kippur. Right. Three holidays. Okay. Um, we go to the 19th for a Saturday. I could do it during the day, but not the evening. 
What's the timing usually on the work session or on the Saturdays? We don't usually do Saturday work okay. sessions except okay. when we do the strategic retreat. Okay. So that would be flexible. Okay. Do you... Does anybody have a conflict on the 19th? I could do the 19th. I think mean, I'll be out of town. But... Sure, you have look here. Yeah, that works for me too. So, Lois, are you? Would you be able to call in, or are you out? I, I'll, I'll be in Vienna. Okay. <laughs> yeah, oh, don't worry about that. Time time. It's not a big so, deal. Two in the morning, we can. Yeah. <laughs> so we're down one right now for October nineteenth. Is what it sounds like. Okay, um, twenty six is out for me. So now we're starting to get in November. So could I say the two it, as an alternative, uh, just for you all to consider if you're going to do like a Zoom call or something, would be the, um, we have a work session on October 10th at 6 p.m., um, which is uh, uh, Thursday, mm -hmm. or um, I think I said October 21st. Uh, which is a Monday, and that one is is a good time because it's just the committee of the whole, so there's no regular council meeting following that, and that's also at six p.m. So just to, I just wanted to put those in the mix for you. So I know Monday twenty first, I can. You can. I can. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's talk that one first. Twenty first, and it sounds like maybe a better fit. Yeah, I'm saying October twenty first, Monday. Days. Okay. I should not do the 21st. Okay, we're well, minus two at least yeah. there. Yeah. Let's go back to the 10th. I'm sorry, Sh Sherry, did you, could you do the 21st? Yes, I can do the 21st. That's a Monday night. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Okay, and what about Thursday the 10th? Where are we at on that one? 10th. I can do it. Uh, yes, I can do the 10th. Yes. Okay. Okay. Lois? I'll be back on the 23rd. So the, between the, uh, the 10th and the 23rd. Scott. That's when you're gone? Yes, that's yeah. right. Okay, so the 10th is not good. Yeah, okay. So, so we're exactly. missing... Well, we're going to miss a couple of people no matter what we do. It's what true. It sounds like. So um, I, I leave it to you all what you prefer, because then we'll have to, on a Saturday all the council members too. So uh mm -hmm. so that's uh but but uh, it's all doable. So let's find the the best and the least worst okay. or something. Yeah. With two tracks and so we'll two go with tracks, that yeah. Feedback. Very okay. good. I think. Maybe we could email and get that Yeah, let's get some let's get some clear yeah, because we don't have everybody here. But it sounds to me like right now the the nineteenth we lose Lois. But so far, that's the only person I've heard we lose on the 19th. That's a Saturday. The time time is uncertain. And then we've got, and between the 10th and the 21st, the 21st sounds better in terms of it's the committee of the whole. Yeah. So maybe we could try those two as options. Oh, so one, just have to come back. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. City, city's got budget to fly her back right here, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Okay. So, okay. Okay. We'll start. We can start on that basis and evolve it. Yeah. And, and check with. See what works. Both. Yeah. And the chair who's not here. So we want to make sure yeah. she's still. And see if we're missing any other conflicts and so forth. Okay. Work. But in general, it looks like that, you know, beginning of October to mid October. 10th to the 21st is our window right now. Yeah. That would do it. Okay. We will send something out to the group and. Try to get that nailed out as soon as we can. Um, all right. Thank you for that. This uh, this public hearings. We don't have any public hearings today. Uh, public comments. I don't see any. We don't. Yes. Have, yeah. Yeah. Or anything, and they don't. We don't do that anyway. Not a uh, not Right. Okay. Um, so much for public comments today. And we have a we have a uh, pinch hitter on the council yes. liaison <laughs> Correct. Um, for old time's sake. Floor, uh, floor is yours. Council member Lebo asked me to come back and cover today, so here I am. 
Um, I wanted to let you know just about some of the other things that are moving forward in this time frame. So um, I believe that this week we will get the mayor's proposed budget. Um, we must adopt a budget for 2025 and 2026 by um, uh, I think at the latest, the, like the first few days of December. So that's going to move very uh, rapidly. And uh, uh, traditionally, only a handful of people pay that much attention to it. But I guess I would leave you with the thought that it's a very tight budget um, because of um, inflationary pressures, both in terms of um, overhead and supplies and things, but also salaries. Uh, you, you know, we talked a little bit about uh, the the salary and employee retention, the the pay raises that came up post pandemic. So, um, so it's it's a challenging budget. We also have community partners like Friends of Third Place Commons or Shore Lake Arts who haven't received any increase in funding from the city in like eight years or something. So we're trying to uh, find small pots of money. And then uh, the other big thing I'll mention is like stormwater and other Clean Water Act mandates that are coming to us that are very expensive. And we are not um, getting, at, you know, enough, there aren't very many grants coming our way for those. So the the way we have to pay for those is on utility bills. So that's gonna be an issue. And then on solid, on, on uh, sewage, King County is also coming up with very large increases in sewage treatment costs, which are passing on to us. They, they actually start at like 6% and they keep going up in succeeding years. So just want to say there are some challenging issues. The mayor and city administrator and probably our community development director have not been thrilled with it, but we can, you know, we, we're dealing with it, you know, because we have to. So uh, that's uh, the situation. So you'll, if you come to a council meeting or, the, or a budget committee meeting, you'll probably hear some of these issues, but I just given you like the, the cliff notes uh, for that. Um, and then uh, you may have heard that we're, uh, we have put a traffic camera um, by Brookside on 178th and that is going to maybe went live this Monday or something. Anyway, for a long time, people just got warnings, but it's amazing how many people are still speeding. I drove that way and I noticed cars going slower. So when the flashing lights are, are going, it's 20, but when the um, but when the flashing lights aren't going, it's 25, but it's camera uh, recorded. So we're gonna see how that goes. Whatever revenue we get from that has to go into traffic calming, sidewalks, uh, you know, other traffic and, and pedestrian mobility safety kind of issues. So uh, that that is an issue that surprisingly we have gotten one or two kind of comments from the citizenry, but not very much more. Um, and let's see, there was one other thing. Oh, so I wanted to mention South Transit. So uh, we did actually um, uh, uh, pay to get some uh, engineering design drawings for the Q-Jump concept, uh, where you would have a bus lane only at the light of 153rd and 165th, and then from 165th north, you would have a bus lane. So you'd have the, the regular uh, full bus lane from 165th north, but at, because the traffic mostly backs up at the traffic lights, they would have like a, a bus lane with advanced traffic signaling. So that's what we've been encouraging. And the mayor and I will probably go meet with the deputy CEO who may become the new CEO of South Transit and uh, see what we can do to advocate that. But, um, you know, hopefully we'll have some impact. Uh, we, we This is like our third new executive person to be talking with in a very short time. So anyway, um, but uh, we did get to ride the new Linwood link um, with the other uh, dignitaries, <laughs> like hundreds of our friends. It wasn't like small and intimate and, uh, and it was pretty cool, I have to say. So 
anyway, that's all. Any questions or comments or things you know you want to put on our radar? With this alternate plan that you're discussing with the deputy CEO uh -huh. lead to less loss of trees and Absolutely. presumably less, less property taking, less loss of trees. As far as we can tell from their timeline, um, the costs and the timeline seem like they have so many uncertainties in them for the current plan that we hope at some point our idea gets some traction simply because I mean, they they really, it's like a hundred properties that they have to take some part of. And, uh, you know, more people are starting to say, well, just take my whole property. That's my sense anyway, of what's going on. And we still have the issues at Bichetla Creek. Can they really have a bus lane there? So, so much, they have their own risk analysis and it's very uh, carefully worded, but it seems to flag all of these, not to mention they haven't applied for a single permit. Yeah, so um, I, I think as time goes on, right now, I'm, I wouldn't be optimistic, but as time goes on, I'd like to think optimistically that we have some chance to, it's, it's, um, it accomplishes, I think, 90% of their goals, yeah. if they would just take a look at it. It's so hard to get the moment, to stop the moment. Yeah, has the plan that, you're going to share as it, or will it be shared kind of publicly? Yeah, it's on the, if you want to see it, it's on the, um, it's on the sound transit section of the, of the, um, of, city the, web, website. Of the city website. Perfect. Yeah. But, um, yeah, we haven't really, I guess we haven't really publicized it. We sent them a letter saying that was the concept we wanted them to look at, but we didn't, um, have the drawing at that time. So that's that's a good point. I'll try to make sure that we put a little notes out on that. So, so the purpose of this meeting is not necessarily to attain an agreement immediately, right? It's probably no, it's to um, basically advocate yeah. for our introduce this deputy yeah. CEO who might become a CEO to us because we're not well known. Uh, as a community and to try to, um, uh, you know, I doubt, you know, sometimes people have never even been here, mm -hmm. you know, so to just try to have a, a respectful professional conversation, not a, sorry, you guys are in the way mm -hmm. type of conversation. <laughs> anyway, sorry, we don't have to, I can talk to you more about it later, but, um, uh, it's um we were we were told to wait till after Linwood Lake opened to try to have a meeting like that because there was so much going on. Your comment about how uh, Lake Forest Park is not necessarily known a well known place or community members actually has is pertinent to our conversation. I think that we're going to have later in this is uh, in, in this uh, meeting today because I think we're going to address some of what, what, what we're going to work on for the next few years. So yeah, the fact that Lake Forest Park isn't known, I think we could do something about that. Yes, um, I agree. And also um, lately, some of what I hear is, well, you guys are like Mercer Island. And I'm like, why? <laughs> I mean, I moved here originally because it was a whole lot cheaper. Uh -huh. the Lake Forest Park than in the city of Seattle. And I worked at NOAA. Uh, so it was great. Uh, so it is just, it, that is not true anymore. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I do think that, uh, and then the perception is that the tree ordinance, you know, goes too far. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're, they're, even our first district representatives don't, aren't like, our old 46 district representatives are still very friendly to us, but we're still getting our new first district representatives to get to know us better because mm -hmm. they have Wooden Mill, Bothell, Kenmore. We're so different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. okay, I don't want to take Thank away from you. your business. Thank you. Yeah. Very uh, report. So we are pivoting to old business starting with our friend, the 2024 Comprehensive Plan update. 
final discussion. I'll make sure it's you or Christina who's seeing us up here. Uh, oh, this is a momentous occasion. It's quite a milestone. So I'm glad that we took the extra time. I, I thank Christina for her work and the additional comments instead of rushing it in July and August. Um, we have a draft uh, planning commission recommended document. And so the hope wow. tonight is we go through those three items, achieve that as a group, uh, and then officially transition to city council. Um, it's not forced. If there are issues remaining, um, we can address them. But I, I think at this point, um, we we have a draft that's capable of going forward. So I would suggest it. Um, the prior discussion was what is the mechanism or tool that does it? It's not a resolution. Uh, as we would do at City Council for adoption. Uh, but the cover letter uh, through the chair and vice chair was discussed. The draft was circulated. That uh, follows the minutes of the packet. So that will be the conveyance or transmittal in included with the actual document. There's some discussion that uh, Chris it might be helpful to Christina as to how the City Council would like to see it, whether it's a red line strikeout version of all the changes and at what point. Um, but I think tonight the, the current working draft is the transmittal. We could achieve that in September. Uh, and uh, based on your discussion tonight, so fix any remaining issues or questions. Christina, did you wanna, I know you don't have a formal presentation tonight, but do you wanna add a little bit? I do. Um, so what you, what you received tonight includes all of the most recent round of comments from planning commissioners um, where things seemed to be a departure from what had been discussed or what we recommended. We included those comments uh, for discussion tonight. My hope is that we can go through all of those comments, uh, finalize the language that will be recommended and vote on a motion to recommend this version of the document. Um, that said, there are some ongoing work items that we will be resolving once this document does get handed off to city council. Um, so as, um, as we've gone through this plan, I've been uh, communicating with you that we've got occasional data gaps. Those are getting fewer and fewer, but we just, for example, got some additional information from one of the utility districts for the capital facilities and utilities information. Um, so that will get updated in the next version of the document. Um, there are still a few QA, QC issues. We're still double checking links and making sure all of those are updated. Uh, about an hour after I sent the last version, I realized that, uh, for example, um, Yana, you had pointed out a broken link and I hadn't gotten around to fixing that yet. So um, anyways, there, there are a few other things like that. Uh, and then finally, um, the marketing team will be coming up to Lake Forest Park, I think later this month to take some pictures to refresh the graphic elements of the comp plan. If you have a place that you want photographed besides like City Hall, the parks and Local 104, please let me know. <laughs> Send me an email. Uh, with those locations listed, we will make sure that we get some marketing photos of your favorite places in Lake Forest Park, and we will put them in the document. Um, and then finally, uh, I do want to let you know, we need to get this to a recommendation tonight. My last day at SCJ is this Friday. Um, I am working with SCJ Alliance and OTAC, uh, we'll be returning to OTAC, um, to see what we can do in terms of continuity. And I hope to continue working with you for the duration of this project. Um, but just a heads up that um, there may be some irregularities in staffing. Um, hopefully not, but that's, uh, that's the goal. So let's get to a recommendation tonight and have a nice clean handoff to city council. Okay, that's our goal. Yes. How do we want to run it? Uh, we have three suggestions. One is a final discussion, if you would like. Uh, any additional elements or uh, uh, cleanup or anything like that, if you're past that. And, and as a group, your consensus is reflected in this document. Um, we would suggest a formal motion recommending this current working draft to the city council. Um, if that takes place, then we could have a finishing discussion among the draft cover letter. A simple order like that, or any issues that are lingering that you would like to talk about. 
So I'm sorry, that was one option, or that was several that was options? Three in a row. Three in a row. So okay. I'm okay. discussing this this recommended draft. This is the recommended draft. Uh, um, the the uh, correct way to move forward is a motion and a vote. Um, we would hope that it's unanimous and we're at that point. If you're ready to go, that would be the next step. But I would suggest don't think of it. So you can do this is the draft you want to go back forward. Once that motion is made, then we shift to how are we going to transmit it? And that's the cover letter. And if, if that's fine, then we'll, we'll go with it as drafted on the 26th of September, or we can work Smith and further tonight. So, um, look, yeah, go ahead. Oh, sorry. So, I, I do want to point out there are, so there are those comments in the document that are for discussion. Um, I think you could. I think you could give direction on those before the motion, or you could have the motion in the second and then um, make any adjustments through subsequent motions uh, based on discussions of those comments. I, I'd offer just discussing them first before we get to the motion, if, that, if people are okay with that. I'm not, and I was scrolling through and I'm not seeing exactly where they are. So I'm gonna need some help finding the, the four new ones. Okay. Um, Council member, and Please. just say to the extent there are issues that there wasn't completely unanimity on, we like to know that. So don't feel compelled to, um, you know, reach a firm agreement if there are different views. We, whether you do that in the cover letter or or whatever, um, we that is something we we always appreciate hearing. So. Um, just wanted to flag that. I don't. I haven't looked at the details, so I'm not at all familiar with it. But I just don't want people to feel like everything has to be tied up with a bow when it goes to council. Thank no. Thanks for that note. And we have highlighted something in our cover letter that we that we kind of struggled to come to exact full unanimity on. Um, and we're going to ask the council to essentially deal with that. That is absolutely um, fine, and that has happened in the past. That's not unusual. So, so can you help us get to the the four? Yes. Thing? Um, there are uh, there there are certainly there are more than four. Um, there are there are several comments. Um, that I'll just go through them one by one. You'll see. I I think um the the issues are they're. I think they're they're fairly thematically similar overall. Um, so I'm hoping that it will be relatively quick uh, to go through these, but we'll we'll just go through all of them. So the first one um, is in table uh, one dash one, which is on uh, enumerated page four of the document. And um, this looks at the uh, the description of the land use element and Commissioner Larson had asked if we should be changing the description of this element uh, to pivot away from growth uh, to look at projected regional needs instead, um, which is maybe a bit of a semantic um, choice, uh, but I, I felt that it was different enough from the discussion that we've had that I'd love uh, your uh, preference to be reported here. So the, sorry, so the comment, and I, I don't have the track version in front of me, I'm realizing I have a, I have the packet version. So. Um, oh, geez, okay. Yeah, so yeah, if you can zoom in just a little bit. So this is changing the word growth to- oh. To regional needs or some something of a oh. similar flavor. Okay. I thought the, I thought like the mandate from um, the Growth Management Act and, and the county was quite simply, you know, to meet projected growth needs, right? Isn't that the terminology they use? As as a region, but then it's divided up most of 39 cities. And so the local uh, target for housing and jobs is being met by this policy. Our yeah, I, I do think that there's freedom to use either term, depending on what, uh, you know, what, what is preferred at the local level. Uh, I think it gets at the same the same thing. Um, my preference is to keep uh, with the term growth versus changing to regional needs just because that is 
a term that we've used pretty consistently throughout the document. And I do think that it responds directly to other policy directives, um, but happy to change it if that's the, the will of the commission. So process question here. So, so that we can get to these comments, right? Rather than spending a lot of time on this, I think I, I like what Christine is doing. She's explaining, you know, what the comment means and why, in your perspective on this, I think we should vote quickly on it, <laughs> right? And, and uh, at this point, I think we can vote on this. I like the term growth. I think that that's very straightforward and that covers a lot of stuff. So I move to disregard the comment and keep the term growth. Second. Okay, we're staying with growth. Thank you. Next one. All right. Next is, where are you? We're in the land use goals now. My computer might have just taken a sabbatical. Hold on. Yeah. It's a very large document. Um, okay, here we go. Uh, so uh, a comment from Commissioner Labonte. Um, this is about equity language. Um, so we have uh, continuously recommended uh, equity-focused language that draws directly from Growth Management Act, uh, Puget Sound Regional Council's Vision 2050, and then King County countywide planning policies. Um, this is a request to uh, reconsider how this particular policy is phrased uh, to, to um, remove some of the language about racial and ethnic minorities uh, and other specifically called out populations. We recommend keeping the policy language as is. Uh, would you like to speak to your your your, your comment? I mean, I, I, mean, I think we understand it. it. We've talked about right. it. Right. Yeah. So. I mean, it's, it's, it's written up there. So. Yes. So I would I say this, for the council member, this is the topic where we have some text in our our letter mm -hmm. uh, around how we throughout the document address some of the equity language and that's where we've struggled a bit to come to to full consensus so my 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 recommendation would be to leave it and let council deal with that because we've called it out very clearly and and i, well, I mean no i mean yes, no disrespect that, to that the would be great. suggestion yeah. but i feel like <laughs> let's not wrestle this language anymore since we've already kind of agreed to push it to council to say we're we struggled a bit please fix it you know the council that are is that acceptable does that sound yeah and i wonder are we able to transmit it with the comment in it so we know exactly where it is yes. yeah the the packet version doesn't have these comments and track changes but the transmittal can leave these as we go through these the decision um uh, modify it as you need as to the consensus, but leave the comment and the detail in there so it can be read later. And I then, think we could we could also offer an annotated version where we put the comment into the body uh, just so that it doesn't get lost in the event that it's transmitted in a different format. Could, could I suggest that the name of the planning commissioner be deleted for privacy reasons? If you do, I mean, I've I've. I've made it public to the world, so I mean, okay. I stand by. It helps the discussion to leave it out. Oh yes, yes. okay, yeah. 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 So that's, that's fine. Then it's not associated with personalities or any right. individual. We could yeah. sit and anonymize so and say all comments. So all comments should be made anonymous, or whatever we leave in the packet should be made anonymous. Yes, anonymous. yes. Okay. The, the idea of being sharing the discussion as opposed to names. Got it. Are so, you comfortable with that approach? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that is what it is. Yes. But I, I would like to make clear that it, that there was some opposition. I, I did feel sure. very strongly that yeah. it, it should be in there. Um, yeah. So I just wanted to. Put yeah, it and, I, and I think we've, and I hope everybody's seen it. I think we tried to capture that in the, in the transmittal letter uh, to say that this is a place yeah. where we struggled. So. Um, so it sounds like we're leaning towards leave the language, but save the save the comments for the benefit of the council. Um, 
So the way we'll take it is that the main document without the comment is the majority view, but there were these additional comments which needed the planning commissioners wanted to have passed on to us. So I think that that works fine. So do we want to vote on this? Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> yeah, I move, we don't move to keep the language as is and to transmit the comment in a pseudonymized format. Second. Yes. I second. second. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Just to check before we get too far, Christina, if we go with the format where that annotated comment is in there, does that mess your formatting up at all? Yes, slightly. Uh, it's workable. Okay, if it's workable, I'll trust you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there may be uh, temporarily a few extra page breaks, blank pages, um, just to preserve kind of how the sections are set up. Um, so know that as those comments get resolved and, and those annotation boxes get deleted out, that things will look more normal uh, in future versions. You could just highlight them and then have like a one cheat sheet. That oh, that's a, yeah, that's a great that idea. Works, and that doesn't mess up the formatting. So just a suggestion that's not hard for us as council members to go back and do it. Okay. Yeah. Okay, great. All right, then let's head to the next comment. Um, there was a question about whether scenic vistas have been designated. That's actually, that's a, a staff question. Um, I haven't had a chance to research that and uh, nobody else has been able to find it. Um, so that, that's a note for me, ignore that for the time being. Um, uh, a comment again about um, policy language here. Um, this is a recommendation from Commissioner Larson that uh, focuses uh, or asks for a revision to say, study the feasibility of expanding commercial or mixed use zoning. Um, I think while this could be phrased either way, a feasibility study might be a reasonable implementation action driven from this policy as written, and that would be my recommendation. Can you say the recommendation one more time? Just Keep the policy as written and add a feasibility study for this expanded commercial as an implementation action. I don't have any, I, I like that recommendation. I and mean, I think we heard from both within this group, but also from community, a, a lot of interest in supporting some expansion, but that I think naturally we'll probably start with a feasibility study and investigations of what the opportunities are, what the constraints are. So I would, my thought would be to take Christina's suggestion here and leave it, but add a, had a implementation action that kind of says start by looking at the feasibility. How does that sound? Yeah, I like that. What's the change that you're recommending? Uh, no, well, no change. Leave the language as it is, uh -huh. but add in the implementation actions a uh -huh. a something that addresses this specifically Got around it. start starting with feasibility analysis or whatever the right words are to basically start work on that policy. Um, so I don't think we have a, we don't need to approve a change to the language. We're not changing it, but we're, we could use a motion to support the idea of an, a new implementation action that gets at land use policy 5.1 through feasibility study. Does that sound? Or some area study or, or yeah, some, yeah. something. It's maybe, yeah, it's 100%. And that's also kind of what we're talking about with a couple of these yep. new business sites. Yes, exactly. I would second that, um, that, that we include an implementation action that maybe, you know, in the next some year, we look at these abilities of various studies, sort of the impact statement, something. Yeah, I, I wouldn't automatically go to an EIS. I would just say start with, you know, something, start, start start looking at that because we're hearing that interest. Oh. Okay, I, I didn't actually make a motion. I'm not sure I should make the motion as, as acting chair. So can somebody else move to add that feasibility action? Well, you made a second, so you want to. So on. yeah, I'll move to add an implementation uh, action to look at some sort of feasibilities or some area study of expanding the commercial zone. 
uh, within the city, specifically along SR 5 uh, 104. <laughs> Do you want to be specific? Is that what we're saying? Uh, yeah, I or we could just say to support policy 5.1, right? I mean, that's what we're trying to, yeah. That's what we're trying to say uh, and not change the definition per se, which say that's what we're trying to get at. Does that make sense? Because it says, yeah. Then we could take off SR 106, but I would uh, absolutely, uh, I've moved to, I moved to add some sort of instrumentation uh, policy supporting uh, looking at SR, uh, excuse me, I'm looking at policy 5.1. I'm trying to be as general as possible. Sorry. Oh, I second. <laughs> all right. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. That's unanimous. Let's keep going. Okay. See, here's a great suggestion for a photo location. Don't forget, <laughs> everyone. I <laughs> I just feel like that the, the LFB bar and grill has been in these documents for so long, but just let's refresh. Yeah, um, and we certainly intend to, and uh, um, just a, a great example of a recommendation here. Um, so here is a place where um, there was a, some concern about um, how, oh, sorry, it's 7.8. Five and seven point six. I'm sorry, they're on different pages. Um, uh, kind of the the repetition that may be present in these um, seven point five and seven point six. Uh, and to perhaps clarify, we've made some changes to the language, um, but there is a suggestion that we consider uh, maybe consolidating or striking seven point six entirely. Um, for for clarification. And the intention behind policy LU 7.5 is to address where development can specifically occur uh, within the city from a land use perspective, whereas uh, LU 7.6 addresses um, more of the very specific uses. Um, they accomplish very similar um, goals to improve access for healthful foods, uh, but, but one is focused on general land use policy and one is um, more more focused on the city's role in uh, partnering with certain kinds of um, of uses like a farmer's market or food trucks. Uh, so we we see them as distinct policies uh, that that move us towards the goal, uh, but also are happy to combine them at the commission's preference. Yeah, I, it's not a big deal to me. I just feel like I remember from our discussion of wanting to kind of consolidate some of these policies so it wasn't so lengthy, but I, I understand your point. Yeah, I, I could see leaving them, even though I, I, I mean, I could easily wordsmith that into one goal, but the, but the implementation actions are going to be different to get at the land use piece versus specific activities. So let's just, I think we could leave them. I propose we do as it's second. I'll second. All there. Aye. Two seconds. On <laughs> okay. And Meredith, not to. I, I sided with Meredith. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, sorry, so it was to leave as is, was that? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, all right, uh, looking at policy LU 10, um, a suggestion to strike the phrase people who self-identify um, thinking uh, I, I think that this is contributing to some some problematic language um, our equity review is not um, it, it sees a lot of value in including this kind of terminology especially especially since uh, racial and ethnic identities have changed over time even just on a like a regulatory, administrative side of things, like the way that a US Census, for example, designates um, races and ethnicities. Uh, and self-identification also is broader um, to, to be more inclusive of people with mixed racial or ethnic backgrounds. Um, so we're, we're recommending to leave the language as is. Well, you're strongly recommending. 
process. We yes, we very strongly recommend keeping the language as presented. Um, yeah, we had sorry, we had several people working on this, so this is kind of a, a summary of all of our contributions. Yes. Or comfortable kind of relying on what we're doing with the previous comment, which is to say we're highlighting this topic for council. Yeah, well, I'm 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 still going to say that I'd like to strike it. I think that it is not consistent with the rest of the document. We don't talk about self identification, so. Um, It's a hard one because I know it's a generational thing as well. You know, I know that my sons <laughs> would probably say, keep the language. And I could probably side with you. I I I want to keep the language. Um no, I I I know that um it's it's a hard hard thing to say that up front, but it, it's the truth. I think we need to vote. Do so we have a motion one way or the other? Uh, someone want to make a motion to either uh, make the change requested by uh, commissioner or to leave it as is? I move to make a motion to keep it as is. Second. Okay, we'll second. Uh, any further discussion? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Okay. All opposed? One opposed? Two. 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 So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. Sorry, but this is not. Jumping correctly to the next uh, comment. Uh, for a second, uh, I'm Christina. sorry, Christina. I still think we should flag that for the council. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. Oh, okay. sorry. Sorry about that. Yes, of course, you're right. Let me adjust that before I. Okay. All right, here is, so this is another research note for us. Um, all right, uh, this is policy EQ 5.2, uh, which is a uh, the suggestion here is to strike reduce energy demand, uh, leaving the policy as supporting energy management technology and encouraging greater reliance on sustainable energy sources. Um, we are recommending keeping this statement because it is directly tied into PSRC's requirements in their multi county planning policies. very strong for the city to come out. I would prefer something like encourage or something, but that's just like um, yeah, something something um, like encouraging a reduced um, energy demand or or something to that effect could be a, a great compromise. I would. Uh that we state encourage reducing energy demand as you state I understand. Okay, we have a motion and a second for encourage. I don't know, you, you can do the words reduction or reducing, reduction in or reducing, I don't know, either. Yeah, that's fine. Or I think that's fine. Encourage. Does that encourage reduced energy demand does that land well for everyone yeah okay can i get a motion to accept that change so moved second Second. all in favor aye 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 all right all 
Um, uh, goal EQ8, which is related to forest canopy, um, Commissioner Larson asked us to consider expanding this policy to recognize the forest canopy as a regional resource. Um, I think that's maybe a little bit beyond the scope of a local comprehensive plan, but I also don't think it's problematic. I would just say that's kind of the council's perspective that our tree canopy provides a regional benefit and that's it's part of our contribution to climate change uh, and management of climate change is our tree canopy. So it's kind of a unanimous view. So in that sense, I just wanted to flag that the council has discussed this concept a uh, number of times. And I know the tree board has. And, yeah. yeah that's yes. consistent. And when you look at a regional heat map, benefit can be shown. Yeah. Yeah. Lake Forest Park is not red. Yeah. yeah, and we have that uh, uh, that modeling report that shows how much carbon reduction and uh, carbon storage our tree canopy provides for the region. So we actually have documentation to back it up. So I move to change city to regional. Second. That's not a question um, for Christina, perhaps, and I'm not objecting to the to the idea at all but can i mean it, it just seems a little odd for us to just state as if the region agrees with us that this is a regional resource well perhaps i mean we, i don't disagree but i mean well, it's, perhaps we need to make the case for it though right that's that will be part of our job <laughs> okay but i think it's okay to declare that it is that's why I said the modeling that we have to support that is yeah, okay. actually significant. Okay. And so, it's a federal government model we've used. It's like a state of the art. Okay. Could, could it be something like the officially recognized the city's forest canopy as a key regional resource so that it really connects yeah, with the city? Yeah, 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 so it's not all yeah, resources yeah, so I like that. Them are offering that. Yeah. Yeah, I like that a lot. So that's a new proposal. I propose that it creates our, our uh, officially recognized the city's force mm -hmm. as a key. I second that. That's what we meant. Okay, yeah. I I meant yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so we have a motion and a second for officially recognize the city's forest canopy as a key regional resource. Uh, that's the motion uh, or the second. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Okay. Uh, now we are on to goal EQ10. Um, this, uh, sorry, EQ10 and 11. The suggestion is to combine and condense these. We have done some work uh, to that end. Um, we, let's see. I guess we, we just wanted to flag this as an area of major changes uh, from the prior version. Uh, but overall, I think the the messaging and kind of the, the implementation actions that would tear off from these are, are the same. And ju just a note, the, the packet version has the graphic over 10.3 and 10.4, and that will be- Oh, gosh. OK. So we'll rely on your screen and your comments. Um, uh, no. Maybe I didn't see, maybe I saw an old version because it looks like, so there are only four points to this this one? Yes, so EQ 10 and 11 were combined and now have uh, four, there's one goal with four policies beneath. Okay, so maybe I was looking at an old version because it looks like you have done basically brought it down to four points. Yeah, yeah, we've um, we've fallen, uh, I think, pretty close to what you have suggested. Christina, what's happening there between 10.2 and 10.3, that stray line? What? Yeah. What's... Oh, um, this, I think, is, let me, will I ruin everything if I turn this to full markup? <laughs> It's going to scroll you to another page. Right. I'm going to wind up in like in a totally different document. Um, I 
think this my education it looks like maybe that's meant to be in 10.3 but 10.3 yeah or... yeah i think this was just a leftover from when things were being rearranged so um, I and i will we strike that oh. 10.1 through 10.4 each read on their own yeah, I'll, I'm just going to delete that as kind of a Scrivener's error. Okay. Okay. So um, is everybody generally happy with what this looks like now? Yes. I'm trying to understand the comment, though. The use of circular economy and the goal covers waste prevention provision was... Uh, this, because... Um, I think there were, uh, or this this concept was described uh, multiple ways between the, the different goals and their sub policies in the prior version um, that we're now uh, trying to clarify exactly what the purpose of that was. Okay. So, I, I, I see it, okay. So should we have a motion that basically that's about we the combination of eq 10 and 11 has recommended here is what we want to see i mean i'm not exactly sure what the motion is here maybe we could just move on because i don't know if i was looking at a different version or if you made changes to it but it looks like it's been condensed so maybe i was looking at an old version we so we condensed it based on your comments but it's just it's just a very big change because we've now eliminated a goal and condensed all of the policies. Um, so we wanted to make sure that it was brought to everyone's attention that that this was a pretty significant change from the prior version. Oh. Yeah. So when you provided comments, it looked very different. Well, I do remember that this was a section that we said needed to be condensed, but um, being allowed. Okay, so are we, can I get a motion to approve the elimination of goal EQ 11 and the, and the new EQ 10 as kind of capturing both of those previous versions? So I think that's what we're so, looking at. So here's my only concern about taking reduced landfill material versus reduced waste and making recycling and composting more accessible and efficient. We know that composting is efficient. It can be, uh, but more and more research is showing that recycling isn't doing much in the world. <laughs> so I, I think whatever efforts that we can do to reduce the amount of waste that is going into landfill is a good thing. But that might be still be that there's still, you know, I, I think that it's probably more powerful to, Christina, you could tell me otherwise, but. Um, we, we need to reduce the amount of plastic that we're using so that it doesn't go into landfill or so that it doesn't have to be recycled because it's not being recycled. But doesn't yep. cover that? Does it? It's encouraging zero waste through waste. Okay, production. you're right. You're right. Thank you. It's a good point. Yeah. No, I think you're right. Okay, I'm good. Okay. Thanks for letting me. I'll try right. No, I'm good. I get a motion to approve the rewrite of goals EQ10 and 11 to one goal EQ10. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Um, a general a general comment that, that um, there have been some pretty big changes to the housing element um, and that maybe reversion to prior policy language might be indicated in some areas. Um, so we'll go through these now. Um, Can I recommend? Do you mind yes. I, I don't remember us ever going through a red line of the housing element and going through it as a group. Did I was I? Did I miss that meeting or did we ever have a time when housing came back to us redlined and then we went through it as a group? It may have looked a little bit different because 
Leland uh, led that portion of the discussion. So David, um, I think, presented that, uh, or maybe David and Andrew uh, at various points in our discussions. I just never, I guess I never remember getting kind of the policies as it was going to be, and then us as a, uh, a group being able to respond to the new way that it was. I feel like we did, but now I'm, you know, uh, you got me thinking about yeah, it. Yeah, you have me second guessing now. If and if we didn't, what would be your concern at this point? Well, just because then we weren't able as a group to look through the housing portion of it and then have a discussion, you know, kind of do the bouncing off of mm -hmm. back and forth like we did on all the other topics. I'm pretty sure we had a meeting on it. But we had two housing yeah. specific meetings, right. but I think what Christine is referring to mm -hmm. is the questions and the consensus came from the Lila memo. There were targeted questions uh, and then captured into this one. So we never had a meeting where we got the red line draft of housing and then we were able to comment on that as a group. I would say it's means tested, but it wasn't in a format that resembled the conference planning case. Yeah. 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 I, we've overall, we've spent the most amount of time talking about housing since we had two or three meetings last year. And then I think two different meetings this year discussing housing. There are a lot of changes uh, from all of the recent legislature. So it does look very different. Um, I, I will need to go back through my notes to see exactly what Leland presented and when, though. So. Could I say, if you wanted to note that you the, the concepts and the content is supported, recommended by the commission, but the precise wording was not able to be reviewed, that's a, that's a useful comment for us as council members. So. I realize we're at this late stage and I completely get what the exchange here is saying, but there's a, a bridging way to deal with that and to just say, you know, the concept here, what's recommended, the precise wording wasn't, you know, gone through line by line. Kind of thing. Okay, I appreciate so that. So it's a way to allow you to move so forward. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's fine for the council to get that. Again, it's our job to go through line by line. So, everyone comfortable with that yeah. approach? Okay. So, that, I mean, kind of the. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, then looking at some of the specific comments here, there's a suggestion to revise the highlighted statement here to say instead Lake Forest Parks. Housing element ensures that zoning for the city prepares for and can accommodate expected growth in the city, uh, and then continues on with the the remainder of the sentence. All, um, of, me, Christina, all of the things that I mentioned for the housing were kind of what I would have brought to the table if we had had a whole topic for this whole set. So we can just, if we're going to do that, that we, you know, didn't that. Um, what council member Cody was saying, then we can just pass on the on all the housing things. So that would have been what I would have wanted to, you know, talk back and forth as they were. And you can just put those in the addendum if you would like, um, as one okay. suggestion. So okay, then we will pass by these um, housing comments. Um, I know to add a definition. Uh, all right, then we are on to economic development. Uh, we have, so we've gone uh, back and forth on this term green resource. Um, this is a term that was introduced, I forget by uh, which commissioner, but some someone in the planning commission uh, kind of coined this term during our process and it hasn't been well-defined, uh, and now we've um, swapped out the term green resource for green landscape, thinking that that maybe captures all of the things that fell under the concept of green resource, which were things like the urban forest canopy, 
um, open spaces, parks, all of the places where you can access nature either physically or visually. Um, but uh, if that, I guess I'm looking for some feedback on that term or Commissioner uh, Larson suggested maybe swapping for green infrastructure, uh, although that kind of has its own uh, stormwater based definition. Uh, so I, I'm not I'm not quite sure I could recommend that one, um, but how's, how's the term green landscape or do we prefer green resource and then adding that to the glossary? I've heard um, it find as green ecosystems. As ecosystems? Landscape, when I, when I think of landscape, I think of the little shrubs and the, <laughs> the green grass and the <laughs> But I don't think I, I don't need to spend a lot of time on this. I mean, are we talking about open space assets, basically? Is that what that's supposed to capture? Uh, I, I think it's it's open space assets, but also a little bit broader than that to include things like the, the like the forest canopy and uh, I think kind of the the natural setting like the the way that the landforms uh, kind of define the city just slightly broader than just the the open space stuff I mean I, I've heard the the term natural assets used that mm -hmm. captures that broader suite um, I like that too. And what else is. I personally like labeling it the tree canopy, labeling it what it is, because then it relates back to the forest resource mentioned earlier. But just to have consistency, that I mean, really, what we're talking about is the forest resource. Uh, I think it's broader than that too. Do you really? I, yeah. I don't. I, I think that's. I think that's a key resource that we're talking about, and it should. I mean, just name it what it is. Anyway, but. <clears throat> I think we might be getting into words when I think here first. <laughs> right, and I don't think this yeah. is a policy. This is just the intro to the section, yeah. so I'm not sure it makes sense for us to spend any more time. You can just flag it and say, is this the right word? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to help you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <I appreciate. laughs> Done. For city council discussion. Council <laughs> <laughs> member Bodie will come up with the right words. That's all. Council member Bodhi to introduce. Um, <laughs> all right, uh, policy ED 4.7. Um, this is a suggestion to add some implementation action specifically for this. Um, maybe that's a discussion better saved for our implementation strategy. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. I'm going to make the executive decision that that's better saved for implementation like strategy. We still have a lot of stuff to go through, and it's 8, 12 p.m. So. <laughs> uh, OK, uh, policy. So we're into community services and public safety element. Uh, this is policy CS 2.5 and a recommendation uh, to or a, a request to strike the policy. Uh, this originally had the term de-escalation training, um, which was uh, our, our recommendation as a, a helpful tool in improving interactions between police and people within the city. Um, we have revised the policy language to, to broaden it a little bit and kind of promote trainings in general for any public servants in order to support safe and positive interactions with community members. Um, we might consider some, some implementation actions that are uh, that directly call out certain kinds of training, either um, conflict, conflict resolution or de-escalation or, or any other kind of tool that can help broaden the toolbox. Um, we already do this, and we were leaders in the behavioral health crisis intervention with social workers and every single member of our police force and gets a uh, very intense uh, training of, of, of this sort, but at multiple levels. So the uh, we implement it. So if you want to put it in, fine. I just want you to know that our police force is exemplary in, in this area and the rest of our staff, small as it is, 
gets similar training. On oh, and and not not meaning to contradict, but we've heard around this table about some personal experiences of negative interactions with law enforcement in this city. That's good. So okay. So I wouldn't want to strike it. Let's keep entirely. it. Keep it for sure. Well, the, the but bring those to the attention of the chief, please. Uh, I encourage you to, because it's not um, our philosophy. And in fact, one officer who did some things was let go. So if I remember how the conversation went, we agreed to keep the de-escalation training, but we also agreed to keep the, um, the 3.7, which was... Um, facilitate opportunities for positive interaction between youth and police and other public authorities. I think, uh, so that policy was taken out of the final docu document, which I would really like added back in because if we're going to have the escalation training, which I remember as a group, we decided to keep in. I also wanted to have something positive about law enforcement and not only have it be negative. And so I feel like I, if I remember correctly, the way that the group decided when we talked about this is that we would have both of those stay. So de-escalation training, but we will also keep the 3.7, which was the um, facilitate opportunities for positive interactions. And, and in fact, there are a lot of those every year. You may not uh, be as aware of them. I wasn't when my kids were young. I didn't pay any attention. But there's, you know, safety, shop at the cop, uh, right. you know, uh, a bunch of other uh, community things, national night out, the officers go to every single national night out location. So I think the department's pretty proud of that. So the positive part of the interaction. So, so it's 3.7 back in. Or yeah, is... we did. We did add that back in. Um, we did make some changes to this section based on uh, the, the police chief's review and comments. Um, so that, that may have been taken out um, or or revised based on on those comments, uh, but it's it's back in now. So okay, pause. Keep your screen right there. So the word positive is not in three point seven. Any objection if it was for positive civic involvement or something? Does that get at your right? Yeah. That's great. So because I, I I'm remembering it kind of like you did. I think we were gonna keep wanted to emphasize both. Mm -hmm. So we'll put the positive in there. Okay, great. Um and then let's go back up to the other one. And if we want to specifically add the escalation. I say not because it, like you said, you do that anyway, but this at least is promoting training that's up to you guys yeah. i mean it, it occurs so whatever you want you, you want it in you want it out i don't my proposal is that we stay, say it as is i don't think we need to put de-escalation in it but i'd like to focus on the police instead of public servants here if we're not mm -hmm. going to put de-escalation in i feel that's just a policy that resonates well with our community and glad that we already do it it's needed it's needed on an ongoing basis what do you think about this police and other or specifically, please. I, I think specifically, please. I don't think. I don't think there's a recognized community concern that Mark or Deputy Mayor Bodie are not having positive interactions with the community. That's not a thing in our community. That's not a thing in other communities. I think it needs to focus on police. I kind of like having police and other public servants because it, it kind of ties uh, the notion that that they that that's essentially what they are as well as our tax paid public servants. That's really that we also sort of have our well, that's fair. I'm fine. we also have our court system and that whole court system. This that's an important element. It isn't just the police department, the court system. I think this is an important concept for. Again, that's invisible to a lot of us. Um, you know, because... yeah, there's lots of resources that are behind the police. Yeah, and in fact, that's a big area of increasing costs um, in the future. 
I'm fine with police and other But I, but I do, to your point, I do like separating it out just to highlight it just a little bit, but mm -hmm. including it for the public service, insinuating that, that these are all public servants. Can I get a motion on 2.5 as it's now written? I move to approve it as written. Second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. That's good. Then let's go to three seven and saying, can I get a motion on three point seven? So we added the word positive. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, goal CS eight. Uh, request to strike this. Um, we do we do recommend keeping it. It does align with Lake Forest Park's commitment to community building and also with some of the work the, the Climate Action Committee put into the Climate Action Plan. Um, I think that it does set up for some of the future climate element work, uh, but certainly it's not a requirement for the current um, update. Yeah, I was just wondering if this was an added date. I wasn't quite sure what the first one meant. And then the second one, I just suggested that that might be better going to the environmental quality and parks section. But if you're setting up a future, you know, adding to it eventually. I propose we keep it keep it as is as Christine has recommended. I second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, uh, capital facilities. A question on policy CF one point seven. Uh, this this is a policy that asks for investigation of ways to improve broadband services. Um, there's there is adequate broadband and there's fiber available in Lake Forest Park. Um, a public broadband service um, does help alleviate some of the cost issues, um, but also since kind of the part of the intent of this policy has already been achieved. Uh, we could consider striking it, um, but I just wanted to to bring it up for discussion. Yeah, I, I raised that comment because I was not thinking about it in terms of cost. I was just thinking about it in terms of the infrastructure. So that's where my comment came from. Um, I, I'm fine leaving it as it is, but I was just asking, do we really have pockets where we don't have that? But I see there's also the economic element. Okay. Um, yeah, it could it could potentially be revised to um, maybe expand access to high speed broadband or something like that. Does anyone else have a strong feeling? I would just I would just leave it. I just wrote my question because I was maybe a little bit unclear on. The... Yeah, let's leave it as this. Let's leave it. Strike a comment. At... Okay. Thank you. All right, uh, parks, um, parks and trails element. Um, let's see. Uh, this uh, this goal PT two. Uh, the policies. Most of the policies in this section were um, relocated to the implementation strategy. Uh, because they are more action oriented. So there's only one policy beneath this goal now. Um, we could consider expanding this a little bit, or we could uh, look at some ways to consolidate this, or we can leave this for city council to work on a little bit further. City council. <laughs> Great. We have this topic more broadly, um, we're kind of calling it a almost a transportation action plan with this element in it of mobility. But uh, but we also, there's a strong parks and trails connection too. So 
I think it's fine. You can flag it for us. And I'm sure we will have volunteers on the council who will want to mess with this. <laughs> Uh, all right, then moving on to PT7, there's a suggestion to revise the goal language to state, develop and expand public access to art and cultural heritage through the utilization of public spaces. Um, I think I think that would be fine. Um, we would lose this, uh, this term inclusive representation, um, but I think that that is also, uh, supported generally by policies within um, this element. So uh, we'd leave it up to the Planning Commission's preferred direction on this one. I guess I would ask if this should be another place that's related to kind of the same issue we're already flagging for council and let council deal with that. <laughs> I think, I think can consider consider some of the specific terms in the suggestion here. Um, so instead of having this um, focus on uh, representation, the focus changes a little bit to um, putting more and expanding access to public art within the city. Um, so it goes beyond just looking at representation the way that uh, the recommendation is phrased. Uh, so I, I don't I just don't want to lose that distinction. Got it. Sorry, I was having trouble reading the small text in the comment there. Um, sure. Other thoughts from commission on that? I'm inclined to keep the inclusive representation because I don't see where in the policies we focus on that. Why are we concerned about not keeping it? Is if um that there might be some future grants that are attached to that language, potential grants that could be attached to that language. I mean, good. What if it was encourage inclusive representation in and expanded public access to something like that? So we're kind of capturing that idea in the comment without losing inclusive representation. And maybe it's in public places in this case instead of for. Uh, this for me the policy don't make sense in the title the policies. It's not, so it's just a little oh, hard. Gotcha. Yeah, because the policy seems so general and have nothing to do with inclusiveness. <laughs> Whereas it sounds like the goal here is to be inclusive. So we have to decide if it's going to be inclusive representation and then have the policy support that or not be inclusive representation, just be supporting and public access, then it makes more sense. But um, anyways, I, I'm happy to. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if anybody else is thinking about it. I guess I, the, the way I think about it is with having that language in the the inclusive representation there, then when you start thinking about implementation actions for 7 1 and 7 2, you would be compelled to address that piece of it as well. Um, but yeah. I feel like it's a little late for us to, to be really be more of a at this point. I, I, I'm a little reticent to <laughs> jump in. I would also be delighted to recommend some additional policies focused on inclusive representation in art when this is transmitted to city council for them to discuss further. Maybe we can flag for them that maybe there's a policy needed around that, an, an additional one. So, so yeah. that works for me. Yeah. Okay, can I get a motion to approve the changes to the language in bold for PT7? I'll motion. Second. All in favor? Why? Thank you. Uh, comment to strike historically from prioritize historically underserved neighborhoods 
for parks, trails, and open space improvements and investments. So the goal would, or the policy would then be to prioritize underserved neighborhoods. Um, there is, there's a kind of a, a strong correlation between who's historically underserved and who's underserved now, but it's not, um, it's not a, the Venn diagram isn't a perfect circle. Um, this is language that comes directly from PSRC's multi-county planning policies. Um, so we do recommend keeping it, uh, and it does very specifically address patterns of disinvestment, um, but I, I think you could probably also get by by removing this term if you wanted to. Could we at least add current gaps in service because it seems like looking at where the current gaps in service, that should be a real factor in where we, you know, where if, if a neighborhood has historically been underserved, but it isn't underserved now, and there's another neighborhood that is underserved, it seems like we should at least look at both factors. Doesn't 10.2 get at that? I feel like, I mean, that kind of gets at this walk shed um, concept, but it's trying to get at, that's for all the city's residents. Okay. Is that cover that? Yeah. I'd be inclined to leave them if it's if we feel like it's getting okay coverage. Yeah. Because that actually by stating historically undeserved doesn't negate those populations that might need assistance now. I mean that might not be historically disadvantaged, now need more access, right? That doesn't uh, it's 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 really a contextual uh, conversation that we're having here. So I think it's probably best just to leave the language as is. I'll second that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we need a motion. We're yeah. leaving it. But thank you. Okay. Um, a recommendation to strike this policy. We're in the utilities element now. Policy 5.5, .5, which is to encourage a transition from natural gas energy to electric energy for homes and businesses. Um, this is based on some of the recent state uh, legislation and rulemaking that uh, is kind of a, forcing a statewide transition away from natural gas. Um, it also does contribute to future work on the greenhouse gas reduction sub element, although there's no direct tie in um, to that element yet uh, with this policy. Um, anyway, I, I think that this is really consistent with current uh, legislative direction, although there is, I do know there is a ballot initiative for this November um, that does uh, look to overturn that uh, HB 1589. This will be a nuanced issue for the council. I, I, I think that uh, it, you know, what kind of natural gas uh, stuff is still allowed, I believe. So I think you can send this forward, but it will be a, a detailed and nuanced discussion for the council. It may not be unanimous. So our transmit it. Uh, I do think we're, we're not of complete mixed minds because generally it's a good thing, but a lot of people don't want to lose their grills and their fireplaces and you know, it's a huge and the, the high costs of transition uh are huge without some kind of financial assistance yeah. even even if you replace your furnace the costs are high so i'm just throwing yeah. out the council has had some limited discussions on this so i'm just flagging it's going to be a heavily nuanced conversation if that's, if that's helpful so i propose Great. I second that. Okay. So would we, if we leave it, would we pass it along with, with the comment? I'm assuming yes. Um, yeah, we'll we'll transmit it with the with the commissioner, the anonymized commissioner comment, and then the additional information uh, that that we've provided. 
Yes. I okay. think you could reflect that multiple commissioners had concern with this policy. I'm certainly not sure that it makes sense to include. It's for affordable housing. Yeah. It also comes into the mix, you know. <laughs> I was just thrilled to get off of the 110 year old oil furnace that yes. I had yes. that <laughs> retrofit from coal. Yes. And I thought that <laughs> gas was a great step up. That's my point that you want to hear. All right. Thank you all. Uh, whoops. All right, transportation element. I think this is, I think this is the last element. Uh, and then there were very few comments. Most of them uh, are for Leland to address within volume two. Um, we can cruise through those if you want, but most of them are just a need to make some updates or fill in some data gaps. Um, all right, so policy T 1.2. Um, this is the policy that states develop a park and ride facility in Lake Forest Park in coordination with planned light rail and bus rapid transit services coming to a near Lake Forest Park. Work with neighboring communities to develop additional regional upstream park and ride facilities. Um, Commissioner Labonte very correctly noted that there was a discussion about whether this park and ride facility is actually something that people wanted or will happen. Um, as of right now, this facility is part of Sound Transit's plan. Um, and this policy, I think, lays the groundwork for some specific coordination with ST to make sure that the facility fits more readily into Lake Forest Park. Um, I do think that we could maybe uh, consider some language revisions that, that don't use the word develop a park and ride facility, but maybe um, something like coordinate with uh -huh. light rail and BRT services in the event that a park and ride facility is funded or something like that? That would be good. Um, it's not slated to happen until 2044. The council was ambivalent about it, though the previous administrations had strongly supported it. So, but the council, the last council and the current council have some questions. South Transit sued us over our garage design standards because we had things like provide capacity for solar uh, installation at a later date, provide capacity for electric vehicle charging. There were things that we did, uh, you know, uh, make some enhancements on the facade. Nothing that was like shocking to the conscience, but they hired two law firms <laughs> and sued us and it cost us, I think, almost $200,000 in legal fees. So softening the language, Christina, I think would be wonderful. <laughs> how does how does this suggested uh, version hit? So instead of instead of the prior version, coordinate with planned light rail and bus rapid transit services coming to a near Lake Forest Park if a park and ride facility is funded and designed. Sure, that sounds great to me. I think Just, wait, if this is your recommendation, planning, planning commission. <laughs> There's a lot of baggage in, in this one. <laughs> Uh, motion to approve that as, as revised. Motion. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Meredith, for calling that out. Thanks yeah, for my Okay. Um, now looking at T1.12, um, this, this is the commute trip reduction program. This is broadly recommended um, in, I think it's, I think this is coming from PSRC. It's, there's no harm in keeping this policy, but you're absolutely right that this is not something that is gonna be very applicable to any of the businesses that are currently active in Lake Forest Park. Um, there's no problem with keeping it and certainly it only helps get through the PSRC review of the transportation element. But I also think that there's, it's perfectly reasonable to strike it since there's not anyone, like there, there's no significant benefit coming from this particular policy. I move to strike. Um, no. I think we, we talked about striking it. And I think if I'm remembering right, the consensus was to, 
to keep it because it, it does no harm, but we all kind of acknowledge that it's not that useful. That normally would not, especially at this point. I like having it because tomorrow, depending on what happens tonight, I'm going to be sitting with PSRC and I know I'm going to be pointing at that. that that's what you said. Yeah. That means yeah. so like right it has yeah. no real impact to the community, but having it and getting certified by PSRC and being eligible for transportation dollars is the reason that I see happening. Um, so the balance would be keep it, but there really is. If no we could get our metro buses to directly to the U district to the university back, and we could that would result in trip reductions. People are driving because it's much slower to take go to light rail, uh, take the bus to light rail, and then take light rail to the U district. So we have more people driving. So trip reduction might be better. Uh, restored some of the bus service that's been cut that uh, now just goes to light rail. So I, I, I yeah, from that point of view, there's future creative things yeah. that might be under this. And the benefit that, is that it's easy to me. We can say, yes, we're doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, we're so I guess my concern with it is like, it seems so stupid to be focused on employers. There's so few um, employers yeah. based here. And it really isn't their issue. It's a regional transit issue. So could we soften it to say, encourage policy, you know, encourage efforts to support commute trip reduction program strategies and practices that de-emphasizes the focus on employers? Is that your motion? Yes. I second. <laughs> so so uh, can you is that, but so, first can question, you restate that? that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, because the reason is the person I'm sitting with at MPSRC has a regional perspective has never been to Lake Forest. Good. So we don't know what town center is. For all we know, we have an Nintendo. Would you, would you accept the friendly, <laughs> friendly amendment to just strike everything between encourage and commute trip reduction? So it's just encourage commute trip reduction program strategies and practices. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. 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 Okay. Now that needs a. Now that needs a motion. Uh, so moved. Amended. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. All right. Uh, T two point fourteen. Um, this is this is one that was this one's maybe more wordsmithing. Um. It was a little bit awkwardly phrased. We've made some revisions. Uh, we have some alternatives here to offer. Uh, this is to promote appropriate street conditions for people walking, rolling, and biking to feel safe around different levels of traffic. That's the current version. Um, the previous version said, promote motor vehicle driver awareness of the need to honor the space of pedestrians, joggers, and bicyclists, which I don't, I don't know that that's less awkward. Um, so our suggestion, our alternative suggestions, if this version isn't, um, isn't hitting home, we have uh, promote driver awareness of people walking, rolling and biking, um, or promote driver awareness of active mode users, such as pedestrian and bi bicyclists. Uh, that does put, put the focus back on um, driver awareness versus uh, street design. Thoughts? Any of those versions landing for anyone? I think the policy is written it's fine. I mean, okay. But I don't know if anybody else is concerned with it. It is awkward, but I'm not concerned. I'm not concerned. It's not the only awkward sentence. In the exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> it's a comp plan. It's all awkward. <laughs> um, okay, so that brings us to the end of comments in volume one. Uh, volume two. Primarily, again, these are edits to um, make some some updates and corrections, generally to links or data, um, something of that nature. Uh, there are a couple 
uh, for example, this recommendation from Commissioner Lee to add some additional text about some of the recent legislative changes, um, specifically the Climate Commitment Act um, and then other than that, some some edits to maps that need to be made. Um, so I don't know if you all want to go through this. There were very few comments overall in this uh, volume two. I guess that first one from Commissioner Lee, I, I, I tend to kind of agree with that because that feels like it would be useful somewhere to, and I don't remember if we cover it elsewhere, but to kind of just succinctly talk a little bit about kind of the legislative context that this this update is happening in. So, yeah, because that's certainly influencing a lot of yeah. the decisions yeah. we made on the policies. So I'm not, I don't want to wordsmith it. I don't want to try to do that, but I think that would be maybe something to for you, the consultants to just add a section and we add a note to council that we haven't actually wordsmithed this, but we thought it was important to add. So yeah, that that works for me. We can we can put something um, uh, some I, I would say maybe if it's focused on the climate commitment act, then it, it will be fairly brief, knowing that it will be fleshed out fully during the development of the climate element. Um, but if you want kind of a broader discussion of the uh, current legislative environment, then yes, I can add um, a, a little bit lengthier section on that. I mean, I guess I was thinking the climate plus the the housing bills. That's okay. It's going unless it's duplicative. I can't remember if we talk about them very much elsewhere. It, um, it gets discussed in like in the kind of topical sections, um, either either in volume one uh, to a limited degree, or depending on the specific topic, um, in more detail in oh. volume two. Okay. I think that um, like. The housing information in particular is, I think that's well discussed in uh, right. Leland's attachments, um, just because they had to develop so much stuff uh, for all of the housing material. Well, um, but there are, there are certainly areas where we didn't, like we didn't really talk that much about the Climate Act um, yet. Yeah. Commissioner Lee, what do you, what do you think? Do we I cover I that? in the, I mean, would you like to see the climate one called out here? Is that? Not necessarily. I think I think the, the spirit of what I was trying to say is to include just in this introduction, uh, some of the state, how, I mean, what people are seeing in this document is really uh, largely in the, to the state uh, legislation that we have this morning. So not necessarily climate, that's just about climate. Well, maybe we leave it as it is because we know we're going to go deeper into the climate stuff in the coming year. There is also, I think, a climate element amended to this. Uh, and so At some point next year, you'll have to scan the little yeah. climate element. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Background. yeah, so we can tackle it then, and hopefully we still have the CCA at that point. Or yeah. I'm sorry, I personally hope we have the CCA. I'm not going to speak for anyone. It's supposed to have the funding given the timetable. Okay. So Maybe. it sounds like it would be worthwhile to, pre to prepare a brief kind of broad discussion of the legislative context and then leave off more specific discussion of the climate. Uh, legislation for the climate element. That did I get that right? Sounds good. Great. Yes. Okay. Um, not going through all the volume two stuff, which which a lot of it was kind of cleanups and things. Or does somebody know they had something that they really wanted to see addressed? I, I just wanted to make a comment. I know there's been going through the document. Um, the references were to very outdated data sets, and I just wasn't sure if that would be able to do that. Uh, there was a lot of, in the parks 
for example, um, I forget the document that kept getting referred to, but that was done in 2010. There was no mention of the, the tree canopy report. It seems like if it's updated, it should reflect the you know, current data reports that has come out. Just um, I I did capture I did capture quite a few of those and I will I will comb through this again uh, to make sure that we've got the current versions. Not all of that, um, not all of the the data sets have been updated. Some of them are just old, um, but I will, will make sure that we capture the most current version. Yeah, some of those yeah. caught my eye too. I was, I yeah. pointed a bunch of those out. That's just my global comment on that section, which you've mentioned before. Too. Yeah. Okay. Is that a thing or is it, what are you trying to say? No, it's a good thing. It's oh, a good thing. It's just a reminder. Sure. Yeah. You'd like me to speak on it, I can't. No, 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 it's, it's, it's good thing. It's Okay, so it sounds like beyond that, nobody wants to go through the comments on volume two and maybe we can proceed to our recommendation. Yeah, before we just briefly, before we do that, um, as well, the chair over this evening, I just want to express my appreciation to how hard we worked on this. Um, and some of you were, you know, working on the commission long before I was, but this last year of, of, of work on the comp plan has been a lot, lots of meetings, lots of effort, lots of good discussion. So just thank you all. I think we can feel good about what we're transmitting. So, yeah. And of course, thank you from the council, all of you. Uh, we are aware of how Tense of this work has been and how challenging with the new legislation is. So we are kind of a little bit bracing ourselves. We're bracing ourselves for having to do something similar yeah, in less time. <laughs> but so, thank you so much for your part. So we entertain a motion, I think, to. Um, transmit our recommendations to the council along with the, well, we're going to talk about the transmittable letter next, right? Yeah, we're yeah. going to talk about that still. So a motion to transmit the comprehensive plan draft as amended to council. That's our official recommendation. So moved. I moved to do just that. Right. <laughs> Second. Oh. Oh. No. No. <laughs> Go ahead. Let's do it all together in a second. <laughs> Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Just, I just want to check. Melissa, can, can you uh, hear me? I don't know. I know my camera's not working. I'm sorry, but um, I agree. <laughs> the unanimous? Yeah. How long has Melissa been on that? The whole time. The whole time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the sorry, way. Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So our next item here then is the transmittal cover letter, which is also in the packet. Um, I believe it was early in the packet. Right, right after the draft visit. Yeah. I thought it was well done. Thank so you. thank you to whoever worked on it. There were several authors here, and we tried to capture um, some of the feedback that we discussed out of the group. Uh, and then a few of us did most of the drafting. Um, I'd like to just ask if anyone has anything they'd like to comment on, or is it looking good? I think it looks good based on what was already done, right? But we've had some conversation this evening and I'm wondering if there's anything else that we should add to this based on the conversation tonight. And I just can't remember. But the one thing that there was just a few minutes ago uh, that we're going to send something over to the council to this, to, not the equity, but was something else. It wasn't the natural gas. No. I didn't think that there was anything new tonight that rose to the it's level not. of highlighting as a significant theme. The way we tried to write the letter is here are the key themes and the one area of you know lack of unanimity. 
uh, in that last bulleted paragraph. Um, so I I don't see a substantive need to add anything, but if there are if there is something we're missing, this is the time. I really like the letter. I'm just ready to yeah. Okay. Uh, do we just need a motion to approve this letter as our capital? Okay, we get a motion. I move to approve the draft of the letters to the council. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. We have a transmittal letter. That will go to City Council the packet for September 26th. Perfect. And last in our old business is middle housing development regulations with SCJ Elias. Yes. Um, so there's there's been kind of a fairly last minute development uh, that Leland pointed out to Mark and I um, a couple months ago. So the Department of Commerce has asked for some additional analysis from all jurisdictions, not just for Lake Forest Park, um, but for, for everybody uh, on the step housing. So that's the, um, the permanent supportive, supportive um, emergency bed uh, portion of the housing allocations. Um, they have asked for a land capacity analysis specifically focused on that and a, um, kind of a, a barriers assessment also specifically focused on that topic in a little bit greater detail than was done uh, for the rest of the, the housing units. They published some um, what I'll call late stage guidance some some um, material that, that they made available uh, just earlier this summer and asked all of the jurisdictions to do their analysis um, and incorporate it into their comp plan. Uh, Leland has now completed that work um, and has identified some barriers uh, within the Lake Forest Park uh, policy and code environment. And the charge will be to work on those barriers over the next about five years um, between the adoption of the plan and when the progress report is submitted. Um, so uh, we just got these materials, I think it was yesterday. Um, Mark and I have not had a chance to really go through them, but I just wanted to let you know that we've got some additional material that we will be looking at as we are beginning the rest of our housing, middle housing code work. Okay. I also read that the council recently updated our regulations in this area and looked at the properties throughout the city. So I'd be interested, Christina, in seeing that report because uh, we had a multiple series of meetings where we talked about this and, uh, you know, made changes consistent with the previous state law, which came down with the, just the legislative session just before this one. So to the extent there are barriers identified, I think, if you could share with John and me the, that report, that would be helpful. Just because uh, we've worked on this again fairly recently and have detailed discussions on it. Yeah, nothing like a last minute checklist and guidebook to <laughs> throw over monkey yeah. wrench and things, right? Yeah. Uh, but yes, we can absolutely get those things sent over to the two of you or the, the entire council. When yeah, time comes. just uh, I had not heard of this, and just because we recently, I think we worked on it in the last year. So, yeah. so were we also going to just hear a little bit about what what the plan looks like for us to work more on middle housing? Was that part of tonight? Or I mean, I know we're out of we're almost out of time, so I'm just trying to figure exactly out what we do today. The the undone was how many comments remained and to go through, and we've just done that. Yep. Um, it, it was a scenario where if that only took half the meeting, what are we going to do with the other half? And so the 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 easiest way was to add this agenda yeah. item in case we had that opportunity. Because yeah. we know that's the next task. Okay. And it's not 
policy, it's development regulation. So it's a clean break, but it's essentially starts right now. So, so maybe we save that for a future agenda topic. Say, digest yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. In other words, thank you for your great work. <laughs> so, so, now we're on beat, <laughs> but not tonight. <laughs> not tonight. So then, so let, me just, <laughs> First. Let, me, let me play this back to you. So at next meeting, we have a bunch of, on the new business side, we're going to discuss these various items of interest that we want to tee up for future work. I assume we'll have some discussion about how we prioritize them, which ones we need to do first, which ones we just want to get to at some point. I assume we can we can put all that and do that as part of our meeting in October. Yes. Yes. And then we'll start on that middle housing work in earnest. Um, and that's the that's the plan. Um, okay. Being that by June of next year, if those development regulations are acted upon. July 1st, we're subject to the model ordinance. So, so that's the urgency. For the for the next meeting when we come together, I don't know if we have this already, but Mark and Deputy Mayor Bodie, would we be able to have a steer from the council on are there particular topics on this list that would be most helpful for us to tackle first? Um, it might just be good to kind of inform kind of where we go next. Right. And not to put you on the spot. No, I don't. I don't know, but that's a good conversation. To it's good to ask us, you know, because I think we're just drinking from the fire hose like you were initially too, you know. So um, it's gonna have, I feel so, like looking at so list. posing that specific <laughs> question to us would be would be good. I think uh, many council members um, have no clue what's coming to them. Uh, for the analyses that have been done, though Mark has been briefing everybody, uh, every everyone has said, "Oh yeah, good, it's coming, all right," you know. So, um, so I think that that request would be good uh, to to come to us. And uh, as and with putting on my deputy mayor hat, I'll try to uh, facilitate some of that conversation and Thank see. You. I know there are topics that have been percolating through council meetings that will be of interest. Certainly all the housing will be. Um, uh, sidewalks, trails, walkways, traffic calming, very actively in discussion. Uh, parks and where we're going with parks, active topics of discussion, climate action. So there are a number of places, you know, that where there's there's been uh, interest, but I do think asking for that specific direction is very good. So um, I want to commend you guys also because a lot of communities, even at the comprehensive plan level, have been um, having huge community meetings and a lot of controversy. And you know, uh, I think that your uh, public outreach and stuff like that has, uh, and the fact that your community ambassadors has been very helpful. And, and so far we have not had that. Now, when we get down to regulations, you never can tell. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's that may be where the rubber hits the road. But I think, uh, and Christina, same for you and your team. I just want to say uh, we have been amazingly uh, lucky. And, uh, and, and part of it is we have the capacity for growth. So we don't, we aren't going out searching for the capacity for growth, which some communities are doing, right? So, uh, but a lot of it is your hard work and engagement with the community and representing the community here. So I just wanna say it's appreciated because as council, as a council, we haven't had much income. So. <laughs> Thank you for that. And same for Mark. <laughs> <laughs> so should we briefly just touch on and I know we're over time, but the planning commission vacancies. Um that's easy. Uh the city clerk is advertising. Uh, Melissa has indicated that this winter her family is relocating. Uh and so the tree board and the variety of other uh, Volunteer committees are advertised, but the primary is planning commission. Uh, advertising is taking place. Okay. And Melissa, how many uh, 
when do you think your last meeting will, will, will be? You said a few months, perhaps? Yeah, I mean, so I'm, we're not actually moving until next year. Um, I was, I, so I can stay on for a few months. I just figured, you know, maybe wrapping up by the end of the year, but, but I can be here longer if you need. Um, yeah. Well, thank you. We'd, we'd, we'd love to keep you. And, uh, and we also want to know when to wish you well on your next chapter. So keep us posted. Will do. Okay. Uh, no citizen comments that I'm seeing, uh, Agenda for next meeting. Well, we're going to start with finishing the agenda from this meeting. Um, and that'll be Tuesday, October 8th uh, for our next one. Motion to adjourn from anyone? So moved. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. All right. Aye. Thank you all for your work. Thank you, Christina. Thank you, Christina. Thank you. Christina. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Sure Have a good night. Good night. Bye, Melissa. Everybody go like this. <laughs>